getting your own story, I was very shocked um, by this, profoundly shocked. And that's why my first question to you, Jury, was how much did you know about me before <laughs> you wrote this? Uh, it was it caught me off guard, and it was quite a fun adventure. I'm really loving it, and I'll be watching it again. I'm so excited about my new freedom and my new liberty and all the affirmations that you spoke to my life. I'm usually the encouraging person in people's lives. This has been a huge encouragement to me, Jerry. You clearly have a gift of hearing from the Lord, and I affirm that. And I'm, uh, I can tell everybody that you and I have not exchanged any biographical information about each other before this, which uh, affirms a really super unique gifting that you have. And I applaud you, and I'm excited about seeing it blossom further. It's a life-altering, encouraging word that will change your life forever if you apply it. And it's totally worth the investment um, to do it. Don't hesitate. Don't wonder, is this right for me? Is this the right time for me? Just do it now because you need, you need the encouragement now. Don't wait. And as far as the the podcast goes and get, becoming a legend, I, I encourage everyone to really just pray and talk to God about it. And if you feel le- led to get or to sign up to get one, I, I, I strongly encourage it because not only did this edify what God is doing in my life, but it also gave me the ability to share what he's done in my life with you guys. Mm -hmm. So that if it needed to, if any of you needed to hear specific things that were said by either the story or by the guest, that it really allows people to hear that and really Mm -hmm. allows them to get your story on top of the story that you wrote with us. Brilliantly said, thank you, John. I would just recommend it to get a story because it's the most unique thing I've heard of, but it is so anointed. So I would do it for two reasons. One is because it's anointed and you're hearing from God and that in itself is a beautiful thing to have God use somebody else to tell you something about yourself. So I would do it for that. And I also would do it to spur another person's passion to help sow into what you're doing because we need people like you who are pioneers, who are boundary pushers, who (laughs) want to pursue something not everyone's pursuing. Um, We want to give you encouragement and we want to love on you. And that's one way we can do it since we don't get to see you in person. (laughs) Cool, Um, thank you. Yeah, Thank so you I very much. Reason. This was such an amazing experience, honestly, and I am so grateful that literally the Lord has given you this gift because it really is powerful and impacting for me tonight. And I can, and I'm sure by just me hearing you just read my story to me, it was so touching and it's what I needed to hear for this week. And I know a lot of people felt that way if they've come on your show. So I definitely thank you so much for your work and definitely just keep staying (laughs) staying in this field it is a true true blessing thank you wow man Lacey thank you for saying that and hello and welcome to the legends of the wind podcast i'm jury shank Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Tonight is a very special night. It's a different kind of night. Um, My guest, Toby Elliott, uh, was previously recorded back in September, and we have not been able to fit her in until now. And uh, I'm really excited about this because I want to kind of reveal to you guys in the audience why I do what I do. I love creating, I love storytelling, I love helping people discover things about themselves. I like the idea of creating aha moments and revelation. I love bringing people to discovery. And one of the biggest difficulties I face is getting discovery for myself. 
And so when I started the podcast uh, in its second season about a year ago, I wanted to basically um, practice and flex my muscles and learn on the fly how to do this prophetic storytelling. And I found out, you know, over the time that we moved to Wyoming, my wife and daughter, um, is that we have been in a spiritual prison. And it's kind of like Joseph in the prison. And my heart was to pass the test. Joseph had a dream, he had a vision, and yet he had it wasn't happening. He was in captivity. He did the right thing and he ended up getting into a deeper mess. And yet he met some people, the cupbearer and the baker in the prison, and he had a choice. He goes, well, you know, should I give their dream interpretation when they haven't had theirs? And I'm making that choice every week on this show to do that. My wife and I, and even my daughter, we're all called to greater things, to greater things in Hollywood, into the creative arts, into filmmaking, whatever the, the passions we all three have. And, and so we're believing for those things to manifest. And so part of doing this program is to invest in the people that we come across and bless them with their hearts, with their desires, with their dreams and with their passions. And we, what I do every week is a literal sacrifice for, for us to do this. And uh, I, I want to help people. And when I give dreams or dream interpretation or story interpretation, it's always easy for me to do it for someone else. But for me, it's a challenge. And it's sometimes difficult for me to hear for myself. You know, people have said, oh, I want to be a prophetic person or I want to hear God's voice and I want to do what you do. I don't want to discourage that, but I can tell you there is a significant price you pay. And one of the most difficult things is it's hard to hear for yourself at times and you need community. You need other people in your life to come alongside you. And so for those people out there who have come alongside Alicia and I and Kylie, we are incredibly grateful. Thank you so much. So my heart is to pour into your life through prophetic story, to give to your dreams and have them come true. Well, there's a saying I have that the dream inside your heart is reality. And so by helping the stories come to your heart, may your dreams come true as well. Now, my guest tonight is Toby, and she's a wonderful person. And um, I will be in the chat if you want to join me there while we watch the play. Uh, the replay. Uh, it's a fantastic story. She's been a phenomenal, she was a phenomenal guest. I really, really care about her and her family. So I would love for you to join me for the next 30 minutes or so. And afterward, I'll come back and talk to you as well. So see you in the chat and here, enjoy Toby. Thanks. Well, welcome to Legends of the Wind. I'm Jerry Shank, and this is my guest, Toby Elliott. Hello. <laughs> cool. Now, um, what's really cool about what we're going to do tonight is um, uh, Toby was put on my heart, and I wanted to ask her if she would want to receive a story, and that was cool with you, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to give a powerful story to Toby, and um, so what, one of the things that people who are new to the show, they ask, what does it mean to become a legend? Now, a legend isn't necessarily you're famous or you're super cool or everything. Of course you are super cool and you could be famous. But the whole idea is that what is the function of a legend? A legend is on a map and it is a place that gives you symbols, uh, that gives you identifications of where you are on the map, what things mean, and where you're going to go on your journey. And these stories are prophetic stories. So these stories deal with identity and destiny. And everyone is different. Everyone is unique. Everyone is super special. And these stories are written in that light. And it's meant to give you hope and encouragement and strength and revelation. So these stories are meant to never to discourage or, or tear down in any way. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, one of the things is the we have a question for tonight's show is what do you do in the storms of life? And our previous broadcast, we had Deborah, who was uh, uh, her story was called The Lost Empress, and it was a parable about a storm and a flood and finding hidden treasures in your identity. So I recommend go back and look at our previous episodes and check them out. Now, 
What about orders? Well, many people have been ordering prophetic stories from us at Legends of the Wind, and we want to thank you, everyone, for investing in us and trusting us to give you your story. Um, now, what's interesting is, is that we have a sale going on for this month with 60% off, and that means our sale price is $99. Typically, these price, the price for ordering a store is $250. Now these things are very special and they really are bringing encouragement and life to the people who receive them. And I can tell you that the testimonies we've been getting have been profound. So don't wait until after the sale goes off, get it now. Also, we wanna encourage you to get a prophetic story. And not only that, but also an illustration from my wife, Alicia. Uh, she has the, done this design for the clock is ticking for our friend, Robbie Little. And there's some amazing designs that Alicia has created. Uh, for example, there's childhood here and also farther away. This is a hardbound and this is a softbound cover. We just want to encourage you to get it as a keepsake. And of course, we have our book, Volume 1. This contains 20 prophetic stories and it has been written for children and adults and everyone can benefit from them. Even though someone has received a prophetic story, all of us can learn something amazing about these stories about ourselves. And so it's really cool because they contain hidden revelations and hidden treasures for you to discover. So go ahead and go for it. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thanks, Toby. Now, I'd like you to introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know who you are. Hello, I am Toby and I am, well, basically a professional graphics designer now. Cool. I am working at the Carhartt shop in town and nice. I'm helping to, uh, put some of the graphics on the shirts and I've actually designed a few that are in there that uh, my boss Miss Baby is selling. Nice, I did not know that. That's great, congratulations on your new job. That's something in your wheelhouse of interest, right? Your design yes. work. She's definitely an artist, we love that about her. Now, have I ever interviewed you about this story today? No, and I, I only came to you months ago saying you were put on my heart and I felt like I wanted to show you something encouraging and something of love for you. And you accepted that gift. So thank you very much. Um, so Toby's a, a daughter of a friend of ours and um, we just wanted to give her something special. So um, have you ever seen any episodes of this show? I have not yet. Okay, that's cool. Well, that's fine because um, even though she's even though you've never seen it what we do here is that these stories are meant to be understood symbolically not to be taken literally mm -hmm. so even though the story may seem like it has a realism element to it there are things in the stories that are meant to be like a dream to be interpreted and so one of the things i walk through our guests and our audiences is, is that the story is a revelation then afterward after I finish reading your story, we're going to have a conversation, which is an interpretation. And that's where we get to unpack what is the meaning in the story for you. Now, I've never interviewed you, and I don't know if anything in this story contains anything specific to your life. But if it does, let us know, okay? And uh, after that, it's up to Toby for her to identify how to apply in her life. Now, you also have power. You have a choice. You can say, I absolutely love this story, I accept it, yes. Or you could say, no, I don't like it, or I don't like parts of it. It's up to you to how to accept it. And you may need time to process, to marinate in it. And I found with a lot of other guests that um, the story really impacts them right when they receive it. And they get really overwhelmed because they're processing on the fly. But later, they go back to the episode and they rewatch it and they go, oh, I saw this in my story. Or that was this about me. So that's something that you, you can be excited about to learn a discovery about yourself. OK, so that's the process of how to handle this. So um, you may figure this out, but I always like to ask this question. Do you know what time it is? Um, it is a little bit past eight. Great. It's also story time. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I wanna let you know that I love you very much and I want to be here for you and to encourage you. Okay, great. Your story's title is To Be or Not To Be. 
Toby struggled to walk through the thick, deep, deep mud. The landslide that came her way blocked her access to the forest road. It had rained all night and all day in the western mountain range. The trees were tall and the clouds blocked the sunlight. Toby went by herself camping because she felt she needed to process the thoughts in her heart. But Toby forgot to tell her, where, tell her family where she was. Fortunately, Toby had a good rain jacket that kept her clothes dry and warm. <clears throat> Black and brown mud caked her hiking boots. The effort to keep walking was unbearable. Toby's will in her heart was fainting. She thought to herself, there's only so much more she can do. In front of her was a wall of debris, mud, and broken trees. This impasse prevented her from coming home. Home? questioned Toby. Where is my home? The feeling of being lost overwhelmed her. Nowhere in the world made sense to her, and now with this landslide, she felt trapped. Toby sat down on a log that ran the length of the muddy road. The rain stopped an hour ago, and just now the clouds broke open in the sky. Small shafts of light shined through. It wasn't much of an improvement, but the sunlight brought Toby some hope in her heart. Off in the distance, a vehicle's engine sputtered and rang out. Toby stood to her feet. She wondered who this was. The sound grew louder, and in the next few moments, Toby saw a large jeep with chains on enormous wheels come up the other end of the landslide. The jeep was green and stopped at the wall of mud. A park ranger hopped out to look at the mess. Toby cried out, Hello! Hello! I'm stuck! Can you get me out of here? The park ranger waved back and hollered, We will get you free! Another noise rang out as a second vehicle joined the ranger. This was a large red search and rescue fire truck. It had ladders on its side and it had a winch with a powerful engine and a cable and hook on its front. There were four men in this vehicle and they all got to work. Toby could not believe her eyes. This was the first time anyone showed care for her like this. There was actually someone in the world who did not judge her and yet showed incredible effort to help her in her circumstance. The rangers used the winch to pull away various trees and branches. They also dug a trench for the jeep to make its way through. The men put their best efforts and energy into everything. The clouds opened up further and the sunlight warmed the land. Toby was feeling much better. Toby saw the men were almost halfway through the sl slide of debris and she grabbed her backpack and gear. She reasoned that even if someone were to meet her halfway, she would contribute to the effort. Toby stepped forward and placed her feet in the mud and around the branches. It was difficult for her to maneuver, but as she saw the faces of the rangers, intense emotions rose in her heart. The reality of this dire situation and the love shown by the rangers overwhelmed her. The reason for these painful emotions was that she expected to die out in this land alone. To be or not to be was the quote that kept ringing in her heart. She didn't want to tell anyone the truth about her camping mission. She wanted to be alone and grieve. But Toby couldn't finish the plan because she knew deep down in her heart there was something more to live for. The sudden landslide during the downpour awakened her. The terrible sound of the crashing was so alarming she stopped herself from greater harm. She dropped what was in her hands and the object sunk in the mud lost forever. Toby came to her senses, and the seriousness of the moment sobered her. More of Shakespeare's quote came to her heart. Whether, is to, whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep we say to end. Toby cried deep from the heart as she trudged through the mud. She tripped and fell and landed on both hands in the muck. Her, her, her tears dripped down her dirty cheeks. Amid her efforts, Shakespeare spoke again in her heart. The miserable have no other medicine but only hope. And with that message in her mind, Toby stood up again and walked up to the ranger who held out his hand. You're almost there! I've got you! said the ranger. Toby stepped twice more and grabbed his hand. At last they made the connection. The ranger pulled her up over a log, and Toby got her footing solid. The ranger used his thumb to clean her face. He said, You've been through a lot, haven't you? Toby nodded her head and broke into a smile. She replied, 
I'm still here. Toby and the ranger managed their way over the slide, and soon they stood in front of the truck and jeep. One ranger gave his hot coffee thermos to Toby to drink. As she tasted the brew and swallowed, Toby thought it was the most loving confection ever. They wrapped a blanket around her and got her situated. Toby felt incredible relief. The ranger faced Toby and asked, What were you doing out here alone? Did you know there was a storm coming? Toby sipped the coffee and looked down. She replied, I was, I was lost and afraid. I didn't think I'd come back. The ranger smiled and put his hand on her shoulder and said, We are always looking to help. I'm glad you're okay. Now, can I take you home? There was that word again, home. Toby pondered the meaning and replied, Sure. Toby hopped into the jeep and the ranger turned the vehicle around. The road was still bumpy and muddy, but Toby understood that living again with hope was much better. Inceptio. That's your story. So, how do you feel? I feel that it symbolically definitely does, like, represent a lot of the feelings I used to have in the past, back okay. when I was up in Red Lodge. Tell me about that. So I finished up high school in Red Lodge because I was living with my dad at the time and I was struggling a lot mentally and mm. was put on all kinds of different meds to help okay. deal with that and they just kind of made it worse oh, because the right. doctors didn't really take into account my autism in the way that basically makes meds a lot of times do the opposite. So when mm. they're giving me antidepressants, it just made it like 10 times worse instead right. of helping at all. Mm -hmm. And... And just little things like that and it got really bad mm. and the story is actually a lot more realistic than what you know actually happened to me because what happened to me sounds a lot crazier and more symbolic you mean in the real life yeah in real versus life. this story yeah the story sounds like a lot more realistic and believable like something i would read out of a news article instead oh. of like whereas what happened okay. you know m most people don't even believe me even my dad like to some extent, like, isn't quite sure what to make of it. And he was mm. there and saw it. Wow. So at some point there was like a bomb put outside in our driveway uh -huh. and it went off when I was just lying awake in bed, trying to like make myself sleep, but I couldn't. Wow. And I remember dying and just floating around in this black void, not knowing which way was up and down. It felt actually really calming and peaceful because there was no concept of fear. There was no concept of feeling and it was very weird. But then I had this sudden anxiety because I had my rabbit snowball and I was mm -hmm. concerned about what happened to him. And that's and your, this experience you're telling me actually happened? Actually happened okay. in Red Lodge. And so Lodge. I was okay. pulled in front of the universe uh -huh. and it was this like hollow thing inside was just the deepest black of nothing okay. but had this orange light surrounding it and like I could look around me and see stars and stuff and we just stared at each other I don't know how long but I just knew that whatever it was like was it good or bad I mean it was it was good but it, um it was sentient in mm -hmm. a very strange way it was very much a force of nature and it mm -hmm. resembled pictures I've seen of black holes Okay. And then it punched me and I woke up in a very similar world with huh. just a few minor differences. Okay. I ran downstairs and woke my dad up and went outside and he saw like where the bomb was. It was a Amazon space heater with like the wire chewed up planned, plugged wow. in outside in the snow right next to our propane tanks. And we looked through our purchase history. It was not in our Amazon purchase history. No one in the huh. house got it. So was there someone trying to threaten your life? Or was I there guess. an accident? Or I'm trying to... Someone put it there on purpose. I, I know see. that because someone, I don't know who online mm -hmm. was, you know, threatening me at the time. But in the new reality, they didn't know who I was because back where they were, okay. I successfully died there. And huh. I'm in a different world. And for a long time, I struggled to figure out, you know, because it wasn't my home. Okay. But I've come to make myself a home here and I like it here okay and now i'm kind of scared of losing this world because this is the world i love now it's mm -hmm. the world that 
you know, I found people who care about me and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, people who love you. I found actual friends that are meaningful. I mean, I had to go through a few that, you know, yeah. weren't, but who doesn't in life? Yeah. But there's so much more to me in this world than was in the previous world where I had no one fake or not except for, you know, my mm -hmm. dad and my mom. And even then, they were more so concerned about trivial matters such as my school and stuff because okay. they were kind of blind to things. Mm -hmm. And it took them a while to not be blinded by the things that society deems parents should care about more. Okay. Thank you for sharing. So what is this story speaking to you? Like you, you kind of said a little bit about what it was in your past. Could you say anything more about how this story is speaking to you? It definitely speaks to my past and the being lost in the woods versus mm -hmm. being, you know, lost in a different reality. Mm -hmm. And the not know, not feeling at home, not knowing the home, the right. not feeling even worthy of home until eventually, you know, mm. coming to realize like there is a home okay. and finding that. Right. Um, does this story encourage you or give you any equipment? Not like not gear, but like it equips you in some way. It reminds me in what I always already learned because it's prophetic about my past but in reminding me of the lesson that I learned mm. and that this truly is a home even if it gets hard sometimes and mm. I got to keep up with it and I can't mm -hmm. give up and lead to like you know self-destructive thoughts like yeah. the meds used to make me think right I understand I want you to know when I was a teenager I had medication uh, that was a mess for me and um, I was I had a lot of side effects I had a lot of I couldn't sleep uh, I'd have my lips would go numb. I, I would have sensory problems. It, it, I hated it. I can't mm -hmm. hated it. And then uh, I made the mistake of taking myself off all medication, and I almost died by my own hand. And uh, and that was just utter darkness for me. So when you share what you just did about the trials that you faced, I completely I get it. I get it. Um, Ironically, it took someone else trying to kill me and somewhat succeeding for me to go, okay, yeah, maybe suicide's not a very good answer. Yeah. And sometimes it just be like that where like you don't realize what you're doing to yourself until someone else does it to you. And then, you know, when you realize how wrong it is on someone else, you can look at yourself yeah. and see, yeah. okay, maybe I'm not treating myself all right or yeah. maybe I'm not treating others all right or something. And it helps you to kind of look inward instead mm, of outward i understand let's talk about the park ranger and the search and rescue is there anything about this story and those characters that resonates with you in some way well i did used to have a big yellow jeep as you probably <laughs> remember okay. and i had to sell it because uh it needed a lot of work mm. it was not in good condition when i mm -hmm. got it and it kept catching on fire with me oh no that's not good as jeeps do especially yeah, the classic heard, ones from the 70s i heard jeeps have had issues yes they've gotten a lot better <laughs> good every year it's like 50 percent less prone to catching on fire <laughs> well what about the characters though besides the vehicles um mm. i can't say i've had too many positive interactions with like cops and park rangers and stuff it doesn't have to be literal though i do know some people have helped me out mm -hmm. and you know one of my old friends that you know back when I didn't always have a place to stay you know they let me come crash their family like took me and let me crash with them for a while mm -hmm. and then later on when I had my own house I tried to return the favor and let's just say they didn't uh, appreciate it uh. as much and kind of took over and it kind of ruined that friendship oh, but I see some people are good for you at certain times. Some people are good for you forever, and some people just aren't good for you. And you got to kind of know mm -hmm. when to be appreciated and when to say, I'm not being appreciated and walk mm -hmm. away. And I do definitely have a lot more appreciation coming in right now. Mm -hmm. I have recently had to like cut out a whole lot of my old friends for, mm -hmm. you know, going down really not all right paths, but. Then I've recently reconnected with, you know, some more of my extended family, mm. like my 
Uncle Michael and his family, okay. and we're starting a tie-dye business together and oh. stuff on the side because we want to, and it's also an excuse to hang out more, but I've been, you know, hanging out with, you know, his whole side of the family a lot more, and Good. even though I'm not very, you know, closely related blood-wise, mm -hmm. like... I definitely feel I belong there very well. That's good. You know, one thing I love about uh, Toby's story is that the ranger and the search and rescue guys, they didn't care about anything about what Toby did or did not do. There was no judgment toward her. They just simply wanted to help and provide a rescue. And I think that what you're describing about getting connected with some of your extended family and that you're feeling appreciated and loved, to me, that's kind of like, that, that there's that help in that relationship and that family, right? That kind of mm -hmm. gives you some sort of belonging, right? You know, when they put the, the blanket around her and give her the hot coffee, that's like essential gestures of love and belonging. And I want to say that I'm encouraged by your story and this story because um, you went through so much garbage in the past and suffered a lot, but then you've been able to overcome on some level, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that this story still is true to her because uh, it shows her journey. Uh, I think this story is very much a good mixture of identity and destiny. I mean, I like how uh, when I get these stories, I, I, I did not know what your story was. I wrote it last night, okay? And I was searching, like, what what is Toby's story? And I kind of kept hearing for all afternoon, to be or not to be. And I thought it was funny. It was a play of words like Toby, Toby or not Toby, you know, the kind of a play of words. And so I went back and I, before I wrote the story, I went and I read in, in the Shakespeare's Hamlet, uh, that scene uh, where um, Prince Hamlet is deciding was there is better to live or die. And so I began to get a sense um, as I was about to write your story, I got a sense of that there's issues of whether you want to be or not to be, to live or to die. And I was very nervous writing this story because as I'm writing it, I don't know the ending. I don't know the solutions to the problems that the story shows up in. And I also want you to know, I was very, want to be very sensitive and caring to you that I did not know what your response was going to be to this story. And so it's very important for me as a host and as a writer, I want to create a safe space for you. So sometimes these stories can be a lot of fun and really goofy. Other stories are a bit more serious. So I recognize the seriousness of your story and I want you to know I honor you in this. And so I want you to know that if you ever come into trials again, whether there be issues of ending your life by your own hand or destruction or behavior i want you to know that this story is a promise to you that there's going to be help for you even though that the landslide that comes to destroy everything and it, it cut you off there's still a way back to the place of home i think that that to me is the promise of this story not just your identity not whether you are going to um, live or die, but that there's a place for you to belong and that there's a way to get out of the muck and mire that you found yourself in. So I want to bless you with this story and give you that encouragement. Thank you. You're welcome. What else is are you thinking as you're hearing this? Or what, I, what I'm saying is, or in the story? It's almost like you read my aura or soul or just gotten mm. like a very base general understanding of my energy and mm. just put it into new words that convey the same base energy i love it's like that. it did like it did parallel a lot of what happened mm -hmm. in different symbolism which mm -hmm. ended up being more realistic but yeah you know. oh i know that's why i told you before i gave you this story that sometimes things can be seen as realistic but there's deep, deep hidden treasures in them mm -hmm. so i'm glad that you recognize that this story, uh, you know, in, in your language, capture your aura, your energy. And I'm, I really appreciate you uh, describing it that way. Uh, and so one thing is my heart is I want to write stories for everybody, whether they're religious or not, whether they're new age or not. I don't, doesn't bother me one bit. 
and I want to you know I want to thank you very much because every time I get these stories I always take a huge risk because I don't know the person most of the time and I also don't know the reaction and so it's so such a risk-taking measure and so like we like people see if we air this show I pre-recorded this privately because I wanted to be very careful to considering the nature of the message of the story for your sake so um, you can let me know if you give me permission to post it or not that's up to you I will honor your wishes but I wanted just to be so there for you you have been on my heart and I've seen you at what your mom's um, coffee shop and I've seen you uh, elsewhere and you you bring me great joy you bring me great hope and light and I love what you're doing with the rabbits, like helping my daughter and my, my wife, Alicia. You are a very caring and loving person. And even though some people may not understand you or, uh, or get you, you know, as a person, I see you. I see you and I celebrate you. So whatever the negativity that has come your way, I say, I move that aside and let this story give you that peace and that hope okay is there any final thoughts at all do you have anything else you want to say does this help you in any way yeah it reminds me of past lessons i've learned and sometimes mm -hmm. you know people need reminding of that sometimes it's easy to forget what we've learned mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. better to be reminded the easy way than the hard way oh yeah and i want this to be as gentle and easy is for you now um would you ever consider like would you recommend to someone else in your circle of friends would you ever say you should get a story would is that something you would recommend yeah okay what's the biggest thing you can take away from this experience tonight and i'll be giving you a copy of this so this is the application part of this of the conversation it's Reminding me to be more secure in myself mm -hmm. and to, you know, take care of myself and always remember my way home. Good. And make a home with what I have. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, Toby, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Guys, I really appreciate you spending the time to watch this episode. I want to thank you for uh, letting this story be told of Toby for to be or not to be and how that this this uh, tale, this legend can bring strength and hope to someone who's discouraged. What if you are out there watching this episode? What if your story resonates with Toby's story, the sense of loss and hopelessness and yet a great rescue and a great recovery? And, and, and basically, uh, there's hope for you. So I hope that uh, this speaks life to you and gives you strength and encouragement. Now. Um, if you want to get your own prophetic story from me, go to legendsofthewind.com, go to the store and look for Become a Legend, and you can order it there. I just want to remind you, for the rest of September, the sale price is 60% 60, 60 off is $99, and um, that sale ends on September 30th. So don't wait, hurry now, and get, a, get your order in. And uh, also, if you want, uh, get an illustrated book cover of your story as your personal keepsake. Uh, now that school has started, our show is typically on Mondays uh, live. Uh, and then, of course, we have Toby's show, which is uh, pre-recorded. And also, there's a couple others. Those will be aired at a different time as well. I have to do uh, homeschooling for my daughter as well as my day job, so we're having to work our schedule out with those needs. But if you want to reach me, you can uh, email me at support at legendsofthewind.com. And please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this program. Hit the like button and also put the bell reminder for any future broadcasts. So thank you so much, guys, for watching the show. And we'll see you again on the next broadcast. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow. It's been a while since I've seen this broadcast, and it's really amazing to see how a story can land in, in such a way. Toby is a fantastic person, and I really enjoy her perspective. She's unique, uh, and I, I appreciate her thought process, and I'm so glad that that story really encouraged her. If anybody's still there in the chat, 
please uh, chime in, add your comments or questions. I'll have a little bit of time here, a couple minutes, but um, thank you so much for sticking around and watching the broadcast. Um, I, I find it fascinating that because you know most of my uh, stories I've written for people uh, are, are, are spirit-filled Christians, and uh, Toby, I don't know what her background is to be honest, but I find her fascinating, and I, I really appreciate that the stories that I write can reach anybody, and they don't have to be heavy-handed or, or shoving a message down a person's throat, but that anybody can be reached, anybody who has a different background, different heart. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing, so yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Toby, for being my guest. Um, so next week, uh, on uh, we will not be having a broadcast. We're taking a, a little bit of a break. But I uh, want to let you know that uh, in the month of March, we have uh, some people lined up. And again, if you do want to order a prophetic story, go to legendsthewind.com. Uh, go to our store uh, and get the product, Become a Legend. And um, if you do not want to appear on the show, but you still want a story, we can still do that. And that's not a problem. We'll just deliver it to you privately and uh, we'll work with you on that. So guys, thank you so much for watching the show and being with us tonight. Thank you for letting uh, me introduce Toby to you and her story to become a legend. And it's titled To Be or Not To Be. And I will see you guys on the next broadcast. Thanks and have a good night. Thank <laughs> you.